I thought today I'd show you a sample book that I've just made. When I buy new pencils, paints, inks, sprays, anything like that, I tend to make samples of them. You can't always tell what something's going to look like when it's dry. You can't even tell what it's going to look like on the paper just by looking at the bottle or the barrel of the pencil. So I tend to make sample charts, all little books, these are my dilution sprays, and in tins of pencils I usually add a little sample sheet inside the lid. And this all works really great, it, it really helps, but it means that I've got lots of samples, books and pieces of paper all over the place, um, which doesn't help when you want to find something in a hurry. So I decided I would make um, a sample book with, with everything in it. And I used one of these. These are Moleskine books. They measure approximately 8.5 by 5, 4 or 5 inches I believe. They're quite thin, but they do have a lot of pages in them. In the UK you can get three of these for around six pounds so they are really good value. So that's what I started with and this is the book that I ended up with. As you can see it's really chunky now. The main book actually finished here so it wasn't big enough so I had to add some more pages and these are just sheets of cream paper folded in half, stitched down the middle and then stitched onto the span of the book, effectively making my book twice the thickness. Obviously if you don't have quite as many samples then you won't need to add pages. Uh, I might at some point paint the cover, but for now it's just plain black. The thing to remember when making samples is to use the paper or card that is most suitable for that medium. So in the front here I have um, marker samples. These are pro markers. Um, and these are done on a very, very smooth piece of card. As you can see, I've cut little tags out. If I'd coloured directly onto the pages of the book, the markers just would have bled through to the other side. So I cut some little tags out of a very smooth card and did all my marker samples and stuck them in with the names underneath, leaving spaces for ones that I don't have yet. Um, some new ones that have just arrived, some metallic ones. Then we get onto aqua markers. These are water based, so these tags have been cut from water paper, uh, watercolour paper. Um, again, because this is the best paper for these particular pens. Um, going on to um, alcohol inks, they work best on really glossy paper. So these have been done on photograph paper. And as you can see, there are lots of gaps here because I don't have very many of them. I may at some point in the future get some more, which is why I've left the gaps. I then get on to my Dilutions inks, which are just an regular card. And these are acrylic inks, and these are acrylic inks, again, just on regular card. And then my cotton watercolours, and again I've gone back to watercolour paper because that's the best for those. Craft paints, just on regular card. I actually have three different brands of craft paint, but because I don't intend to buy a full set of each brand, I've just put them all together. And I haven't left any extra space because I probably won't buy any more of these. I have enough now of the colours that I think I will probably need in the future, so I won't, probably won't buy any more of those. Um, those are my regular acrylics. And then I decided I would add in my embossing powders. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to put things away and forget that I have them. And embossing powders tend to be one of those things. They're packed away in a drawer and I forget to use them. So by putting them in this book, hopefully now, when I'm flicking through the book, I'll, I'll see them and that will perhaps prompt me to use them more often. These are graphitined pencils by Derwent and hopefully you can see that the tags look like they're done in two halves that's because I've coloured across the tag and then used a wet paintbrush to go over just one half of the tag so this now shows me what the pencil looks like when it's dry but also what it looks like once it's been wet when it came to doing my, my regular pencils I have quite a lot of them so just to save space I used little squares instead of tags and these are my Derwent Colour Softs, again with various gaps left for the ones that I have missing from the set. And I did the same with my Prism pencils. These are Caran d'Ache watercolour pencils, so again these have been done on watercolour paper. 
and these are the Inktense pencils. And again, because these are activated with water, I've, I've done these on watercolour paper. Um, these are Academy Skin Tones. Here. Um, these are by Derwent as well. Um, and again, because they're activated by water, they've been done on watercolour paper. And these are Derwent's Metallics. And again, I've done the same thing. I've coloured across the whole tag and then gone over half of the tag with a wet paintbrush. So you can see what it looks like dry and what it looks like once it's been wet. Next, these are my absolute favourites. These are my um, Neo Colour 2 crayons. Again, because these are activated with water, I've done them on watercolour paper. And then I have some drawing inks. And finally at the back, I have some brush or paints. If you've never heard of brush or paints, I urge you to go and Google them. They are amazing. They come in small tubs and they are in powder form. You mix them with water to get um, a solid colour. But if you wet your surface and drop the powders onto the surface, you then get this mottled effect and you can see that there are lots of different colours within the main colour. So I did two samples for each colour showing what they look like as a block colour and what they look like just dropped onto wet paper and the same on there. At the sides you can see all my little tabs. This means that I can go directly to a certain section if I want to look. So I want to look at the embossing powders, I can go straight to that section. And this is just a little bit of tape with a label trapped inside it. You can see all the labels on the side. And there are 30 different sections to this book now. So I'm hoping this book will really help when I'm looking for a colour or wanting to choose a colour or wanting to compare colours between different brands. If you decide to make a book, I'd really like to see it. Thanks for watching.